Hello students welcome to English tutorials by Poonam Thakur in this video we will discuss about Robert Frost and detailed explanation of his famous poem A Roadside Stand so let's get started about the poet Robert Frost was born in 1874 in San Francisco he is a highly acclaimed american poet of the 20th century Robert Frost wrote about characters people and landscapes He won the prestigious Pulitzer Prize for literature four times and was made poet laureate of Vermont. He also won the American Academy of Art and Letters gold medal. His poems are concerned with human tragedies and fears, his reaction to the complexities of life and his ultimate acceptance of his burdens. He was also the only American poet honored with an invitation to read his work at a presidential inauguration stopping by the woods on a snowy evening breaches mending walls and the road not taken are a few of his well known poems in the poem a roadside stand robert frost presents the lives of poor and deprived rural people with the deepest sympathy and humanity The poem depicts poet's scathing criticism of unequal society where there is a huge division between the rich and the poor owing to unequal distribution of wealth. The poem thus highlights the government apathy towards the economic plight of these rural people. Robert Frost's poems are very simple as well as amusing. His poems begin in delight and ends in wisdom. A roadside stand highlights the stark reality of class difference between the city rich and the rural poor and calls for deepest sympathy and concern for the latter. The poet is very critical of the way the city folks treat these villagers who are selling their locally produced goods and wheezing past them without a sense of empathy and appeals to them to come forward to relieve the rural poor. of their misery want and poverty let's read the poem first and then try to understand one stanza at a time a roadside stand by robert frost stanza 1 the little old house was out with a little new shed in front at the edge of the road where the traffic sped a roadside stand that too pathetically pled it would not be fair to say for a dole of bread but some of the money the cash whose flow supports the flower of cities from sinking and withering faint let's focus on the words used in the poem it will help you to understand the poem in better way and it will also enhance your vocabulary the first word or phrase we have is out with here it means extended next is traffic sped sped is the past participle of speed and it means cars or vehicles moving very fast rapidly swiftly pathetically means pitifully next we have word pled which means requesting pleading or appealing dole of bread it means livelihood in american english dole means giving out of money or food to those in great need and relief Usually it's given to poor people. Flower of cities. Extra cash flow that helps cities to flourish. Next word is withering, becoming dried up and dead or to fade away. Sinking and withering faint. It means cash flow that supports city business and prevents it from any failure. Flowers of cities. In the last line the phrase flowers of cities is a metaphor just as flowers are kept from withering with extra care similarly extra cash flow helps cities to flourish the poem begins with a description of the scene that the poet sees he describes a little old house with a stand which had a small new shed by the side of the road that had fast moving traffic the inhabitants of the little old house have extended the shed in front around the edge of the road where traffic passes by they have erected a roadside stand to sell the home grown fruits and vegetables a roadside stand that too pathetically pled it would not be fair to say 
for a dole of bread. The shed has been personified to plead. It seemed to the poet as if this place was making a desperate request to pass by to stop for a while and buy some stuff from them. Though it would be unfair to state that the shed owners wanted a charity or are begging for a loaf of bread. Nevertheless, they seemed to plead to implore the passerby to stop and buy something from them. The poet, however, stresses that the people running the roadside stand did not expect any charity or donation or the basic amenities of life, but a source of alternate income to liberate them from their hand-to-mouth existence. The poet says the sole expectation of the roadside people is the flow of city money into their hands but their expectations are never fulfilled as the city going people are not kind enough to stop for a while to buy their produce hence a pathetic existence for the roadside stand but some of the money the cash whose flow supports the flower of cities from sinking and withering faint the rustics craved for some city money to fall into their hand so that they could support their lives with it, so that they can have a decent life. These deprived people long for the feel of the currency, the circulation of which flourishes the city folks. In the last line, the phrase, flower of cities, is a metaphor. Just as the flowers are kept from withering with extra care, Similarly, extra cash flow helps cities to flourish and save them from fading away. So the poet says that this money could be better used in supporting the lives of village people from sinking and withering away. The occupants of the shed expect a small share of the huge wealth of the city so that they can survive and can support their families. But the rich people of the city keep moving on as part of the regular traffic without caring to share their money with the rural people. Lines 7 to 13 The polished traffic passed with a mind ahead, or if ever aside a moment, then out of sorts, at having the landscape marred with the artless paint of signs that with N turned wrong and S turned wrong, offered for sale wild berries in golden quartz or crooked-necked golden squash with silver warts or beauty rest in a beautiful mountain scene. Polished traffic here refers to so-called refined city-going people. Out of sorts, city people feel uneasy as they think presence of the roadside stand mars the beauty of the landscape. So they are upset, marred. It means spoiled or ruined. Next word is quartz, which means containers. Warts refers to lumps, a small hard benign growth on the skin. Signs with S turned wrong and N turned wrong. The owner of the stand being illiterate has erected the board with the wrong spellings with S and N inverted. Beauty rest in a beautiful mountain scene. Beauty resting in a mountain scene is probably a scenic painting made by the inhabitants of the roadside stand meant for selling to the rich people. The polished traffic passed with a mind ahead. The polished traffic is the skillful use of a transferred epithet in the depiction of the urban city dwellers who passed through the countryside with their minds preoccupied. Outside on the road, the traffic was polished, which reveals that the cars that pass are high class and belong to the relatively rich, sophisticated city people. But unfortunately, the refined polished traffic wheezed past unmindful of the stall. The poet says that their mind is focused on their destination and they are oblivious of the roadside stand. Or if ever aside a moment, then out of sorts at having the landscape marred with the artless paint of signs that with N turned wrong and S turned wrong. Poet says that city people do not generally stop or show concern for rustics, or if by chance anyone stopped, 
it would be with the feeling of reproach at this blot on the scenic landscape however when they do pay attention to what is around them it is not with gratitude or acceptance poet says that city folks feel that these rustics have spoiled the beauty of the landscape they complain that the roadside stand with its artless paint ruins the beauty of nature they show displeasure at the direction signs are turned wrong they are very disturbed to see the unimpressive and toppled up sign boards their complaint is that the letters like n and s of the sign posts are wrongly written offered for sale wild berries in wooden cots or crooked necked golden squash with silver warts the quality of local produce is highlighted with the usage of words like crooked necked squash with silver warts city dwellers appears to disapprove the quality of their products the poet goes on to mention a few of the produce being sold at the shed the villagers are selling wild berries in wooden containers crooked necked golden squash with silver lumps and paintings of mountain scenery at their stand the place also offers a blissful stay in the lap of nature for the ones who have money but the travelers do not appreciate it angry at the callous attitude of the so called polished traffic the poet commands them to move ahead lines 15 to 17 you have the money but if you want to be mean why keep your money and go along the hurt to the scenery wouldn't be my complaint so much as the trusting sorrow of what is unsaid crossly means angry you have the money but if you want to be mean why keep your money this crossly and go along the city dwellers have money but they are selfish and do not want to share their money the poet questions the rich city dwellers why they are being so mean and stingy although they have a lot of money the poet wonders why they get angry with rustics they criticize without remorse as they do not think about the people who cannot afford to fix their signs and they also ignore the product set up for sale the interjection of this crossly shows that the responses of the rich that drive by lack any sort of elegance compassion and politeness in fact they are outright rude as they place more value on the beauty of the scenery than the livelihood of the people who live there the rich that pass by have the money to spend on these little things but poet says they are more miserly than forthcoming being angry at the indifferent attitude of the so called polished traffic the poet asks them to move ahead without noticing the roadside stand the hurt to the scenery wouldn't be my complaint so much as the trusting sorrow of what is unsaid the poet's concern his complaint is not about the blemish on the landscape but regarding the unwanted sorrow of the shed owners he says that he is not bothered about how much such a stand blots the beautiful scene but is deeply hurt by the unexpressed empathy of these stand owners he is more concerned about the pain and sorrow reflected by the unsaid words of these simple people who trust that the city people would share their wealth with them trusting sorrow refers to the fact that the country people set up the shed in the hope of attracting city people to buy their produce thus providing the additional income to enjoy the luxuries of life however they are disappointed they are sad in the fact that no one is interested in their sales but they are more interested in the removal of the shed that mars the landscape city people say nothing but expressions and their silence speaks about the cold and indifferent attitude towards the rural people lines 18 to 22 here far from the city we make our roadside stand and ask for some city money to feel in hand to try if it will not make our being expand and give us the life of the moving pictures promise that the party in power is said to be keeping from us if it will not make our being expand 
means extra inflow of cash would improve the financial status of the poor villagers so again we can see that poet stresses on the fact that the rustics do not want the money as the loan source of income but as an additional allowance that will provide them with the lifestyle depicted in the movies life of the moving pictures here refers to standard lifestyles as shown in movies party in power means ruling political party the poor rustic folks erected their roadside stand far away from the city and hoped that some money from the rich city dwellers would pass into their hands and it will help them to grow and they will be able to enjoy a comfortable living expressing the viewpoint of these people the poet conveys their ardent their passionate desire to handle some city money which may perhaps alleviate their sufferings and then with this money they will be able to live a life as shown in movies the poet then blames the ruling political party for the plight of the poor and deprived people of villages including those who run the roadside stand the political party in power actually deprives them of a prosperous life the poet says that political parties have not yet provided the lifestyles that they promised to the people of villages while seeking votes village people are merely used as vote banks and therefore become victims of false promises lines 23 to 26 it is in the news that all these pitiful kin are to be brought out and mercifully gathered in to live in the villages next to the theater and the store where they won't have to think for themselves any more pitiful it means miserable deserving or arousing pity kin here it means village people or one's family and relations mercifully means compassionately gathered assembled or grouped together the poet says that these days it's in the news that so called good doers such as developers civic authorities are promising the farmers various benefits if they agree to relocate leaving their village or countryside they tell them they will be relocated to the best location where they can have easy access to all the facilities such as the theater and the stores and their economic status would improve hence they will not have to worry about their living lines 27 to 31 while greedy good doers beneficent beasts of prey swarm over the lives and forcing benefits that are calculated to soothe them out of their wits and by teaching them how to sleep they sleep all day destroying their sleeping at night the ancient way let's focus on the word meanings first greedy means selfish materialistic good doers apparent benefactors supporters patrons sponsors a person who gives money or other kind of help to a person beneficent means generous kind beasts of prey animals that hunt other animals for food swarm means crowd enforcing putting in force or imposing something calculated planned soothe calm to appease somebody wits means intelligence however frost says that these benefactors are selfish as they help these pitiful kin for their own advantage these benefactors make the villagers completely dependent on them thus robbing them of their ability to think for themselves or be independent the innocent village farmers are not only misguided and manipulated but robbed of their land and sleep the farmers end up becoming their prey the capitalist and the party in power impersonate as the benefactors of these village people but in their greed these beasts of prey impose themselves on the country people and tempt them with benefits which are tactfully calculated by them they come with the vain promises to provide the country dwellers benefits which would comfort them beyond their imagination 
thus tempted and allured innocent rustics forget to protect their rights by ensuring them a better life and hence good sleep they actually sleep peacefully themselves and destroy their slumber with anxiety in the ancient way people used to work during the day and sleep in nights which has been reversed here where villagers are not able to sleep at night because they haven't worked in the day their greedy benefactors then sleep over their promises leaving these poor people even more miserable and wretched lines 32 to 37 sometimes i feel myself i can hardly bear the thought of so much childish longing in vain the sadness that lurks near the open window there that waits all day in almost open prayer for the squeal of brakes the sound of a stopping car of all the thousand selfish cars that pass in these lines the poet directly sympathizes with the rustics with the countryside people putting himself in their shoes the poet cannot even handle the thought of living a life of such deep longing knowing that it will never be fulfilled childish longing in vain it means villagers futile expectations for city money sadness that lurks here it means suffering that lies in waiting for a customer to appear selfish cars cars are referred to as selfish as the owners of the cars do not understand the suffering of the country people so they do not contribute in enhancing their financial status poet has used transferred epithet over here in this stanza the poet tells us about the pitiable condition of the farmers he says they wait and pray the whole day for a customer just like a child they become happy when they see an approaching car but the passenger either stops the car to take a u turn or to ask directions from the peasant and that just makes the peasant feel that the city people are selfish and these incidents become unbearable for the owners of the roadside stand the poet is distressed to note the endless wait on the part of the shed owners for their prospective buyers he calls it almost a childish longing in vain the shop window is blanketed with an ambience of sadness that surrounds expectancy and hope in the phrase sadness that lurks sadness has been personified as it lies in wait near the open window praying for a city customer to arrive and inquire the price of the village people's product the poet is sensitive to the sadness he sees in the open window of the countryside stand where the owners wait hopefully with prayer for the shrieking of the brakes or the sound of the cars stopping in that lies their hope of earning some city money still the cars that pass by spare nothing and are selfish they think only of themselves and thus all they stop are for self serving reasons lines 38 to 43 just one to inquire what a farmer's prices are and one did stop but only to plow up grass in using the yard to back and turn around and another to ask the way to where it was bound and another to ask could they sell it a gallon of gas they couldn't they had none didn't it see word meanings plow up grass while reversing and turning their cars their vehicles city goers plow up a cloud of grass gallon of gas here it means gallon of petrol or they are asking for fuel they had none village people did not have fuel to sell poet says that when one does stop their hopes are shattered for it only digs up the grass and uses the yard to reverse and turn around or to ask for directions another one stops to inquire its destination poet says some do ask for goods but not that the shed owners sell they ask for gallon of fuel when it is clear that they sell none it's indeed a satire that one of the occupants of the car stops at the shed 
to get a gallon of gas. It highlights a sense of alienation that exists between the rural and urban life. None of them seems to be considerate enough to buy the products from the roadside stand. Day in and day out, it is a charade that these poor rustics are forced to participate in. With every passing selfish car that stops, the farmer's hope rises only to be disappointed. This indifferent behavior upsets the country people tremendously. Lines 44 to 51 No in country money, the country scale of gain, the requisite lift of spirit has never been found. Or so the voice of the country seems to complain. I can't help owing the great relief it would be to put these people at one stroke out of their pain. And then next day as I come back into the scene, I wonder how I should like you to come to me and offer to put me gently out of my pain. Vocabulary Country scale of gain means required amount of money falls short. Requisite means necessary, essential, required. So the requisite lift of spirit means money is considered a catalyst to raise spirit of village folks. Voice of the country means the demand of village people. Sane means stable, sound frame of mind, well balanced. The countryside people in reality never earned the profits that they needed or deserved. They never felt the strong connection between them and the faraway cities and the spirits remained dampened and alone. So in the last line, poet says that it is quite difficult for the poor people to have a prosperous life without any flow of money from the city people as the country money revolving in the country cannot uplift their lives and without prosperity, there cannot be any enthusiasm in life. The poet felt as though he could hear the countryside making this complaint loud and clear, saying that they have not been able to achieve what is really needed. The poor are left to get poorer while the rich pass by in their comfort. Country money is the small income that the poor village folks make. It cannot be compared to the wealth of the city. With such a meager income and small profit earned, village people could never experience lift of spirit as small income can never give additional lift to one's spirit. Knowing this, the poet wonders whether it would be better to take all these people out of their tangible misery and give them eternal relief from the suffering of the world. The poet wishes to lift the poor people out of their pain, poverty and endless miseries. He is sad and thinks that death at one stroke can end all his grief and suffering. In a sense, he wonders whether mercy killing is ethical in this situation and whether this painless process would benefit them far more than the pain they feel every day of their lives. But next morning, when he came to senses, he realized that his earlier thought of death being the only solution to come out of poverty is useless, is futile and decided that government, civic bodies can only uplift the miserable condition of the village folks. The poet is jolted out of his wishful thinking into the world of reality as he becomes painfully aware of his own pain and misery and wishes that someone could come and take his pain away. He feels that he would like them to tell him that they are now out of pain and this in turn would relieve all his pain and suffering. So in the last line, poet wonders about the situation when he would gain his sanity how he would desire his countrymen to pull him out of his pain. With this, we come to the end of this lecture. Don't forget to give your valuable feedback. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share and subscribe. English Tutorials by Poonam Thakur